Salut Sylvain. Au revoir. Ça attend ça You know, we never forget this moment. Leaving home for the first time. It's tough on everyone. There's tears, sure. But the flip side is that excitement we feel for the adventure that lies ahead. This is British Columbia's Okanagan Valley. Quebec kids grew up dreaming about this place. And first time out, this is where they head for. A sort of Shangri-La. A faraway place of milk and honey and summer jobs. It gets in us, you know, to follow the seasons when the spring comes and uh, you know that there are some cherries, it's like, oh, I have to go and pick the cherries. You know? <laughs> when the snow has melted and the feeling of summer kicks in, many Quebecois seem to develop itchy feet. That's when Marise and Sylvain started planning their trip west. I never seen uh, the Canada before, but except uh, Quebec and Ottawa, and uh, there's nothing to see there. <laughs> In BC, we have the both the nature and, and the work. I really love nature, so I want to be in the nature. No keys, <laughs> just a tent and a sleeping bag. We wanted to build a little love story, maybe. We wanted to uh, pass, uh, to live a free... The adventure. It will be the first time she will be uh, away from home, yeah, so long. I'm happy for her. I'm happy for her because she had a dream and she will do it. We're cherry growers. We have 50 acres of cherries. So cherries is our life. My wife and I, Chris and I, have been in this business for 10 years. And so we built up a tradition of Quebecois coming to us. We really like having largely a Quebecois crew. They, they, they gel very well. We, we try and create a family here. So they know that before they get here. Jean-Vincent from Quebec City has already seen a bit of the world. But this summer, he's pretty excited to be heading to BC to pick cherries. It's always fun to partir de chez soi un peu, de décrocher un peu de ce qui se passe ici pour un peu de changement. Ici, on, étant donné qu'on est dans le courant habituel, on n'a pas le temps de réaliser là, est... qui qu'on est. Ici, le savon, l'huile de soleil, fort important. OK. En fait, je pense que pour Jean-Vincent, c'est le début d'une autre aventure. Jean-Vincent, c'est pas la première fois qu'il quitte le, le foyer familial. For Jean-Vincent, this trip will be different. This time, he's determined to pay his own way. My mother was cleaning out the attic the other day and she, she found some of her old picker records from the 60s. And you know, she said there, there were a lot of Quebec kids back then in the 60s and 70s, you know? And it, it, I don't know where it started, to be honest. Um, I would assume it was driven out of a poor economy in Quebec. I came here to pick fruit when I was 20 years old. The woman I love told me I'm going out west. I was living in Montreal then, and I had 24 hours to make a decision. So I said, I'm coming. Yeah, we're still together, so happy ending. The tree fruit industry in the Okanagan has been in existence for 100 years, and if you look at who came to work on the farms in that time period, it was always one wave of immigrant after another. Eventually, there was um, a setup with the provincial government in British Columbia where they recommended to the local growers that they go look in Quebec for young unemployed people to come in and, and do the farm work in this valley. And even today, nothing much has changed. By the time Marise and Sylvain get to the South Okanagan, 
It's been days cooped up on a Greyhound bus. The best part, I think it's now. Yeah, yeah of <laughs> Now course. that we arrive and uh, that uh, the travel is finished, we can finally sleep well. Good morning. Hi. How are you? Hi. I'm Greg. Hi. Marie? Yes. Okay. So, Anne, good to meet you. Yeah. Good to meet. I heard all about you. you. So you had a good trip out? Yeah, it's nice. On the bus? Yes. On the bus. Well, yeah. oh, you got it's money then, you guys. <laughs> You're rich pickers. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, let's go down and we'll meet Jesse and do our thing here. No hard drugs whatsoever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. None. Um, the rest, I don't really care about. Okay. And when we want you to work, we want you to work. You need to take work when you get it. Because the cherries are late. There's Jester over here. Hey, Canada. Oh, peace. Peace. <laughs> when most of the travelers get this far, they're over the moon. For Diane Blanchette from Victoriaville, the Rockies were only dreams, pictures in a book. But now, wow, they're reality. La première fois que j'ai vu les, les montagnes rocheuses, c'était en sortant de Calgary, à peu près 5-10 minutes après le Calgary, on les a vus apparaître au loin. Puis j'étais toute énervée, j'étais contente, mais pas, en même temps, ça me faisait peur. Tu sais, c'est gros, c'est quelque chose d'inconnu. Puis je les ai trouvées super belles, je manque de mots pour les décrire. <rire> En camping, hein? En camping, c'est nuit. On va se coller. Yes, on va se coller, moi je dis. And after five days and five nights of non-stop cross-country driving, jean vincents gang are trying their hand at gourmet cooking. We are three guys and we eat a lot, so... And, uh, normally it's our mothers that buy our food and now we have to buy it from ourselves, so... For the foods, I miss my mother, of course, yeah, because, uh, yeah, it's only camping food, so it's uh, with cans and everything. But it's quite good either, I mean, but it's not your mother food, so... <laughs> The trees are healthy, everything looks good that way. Um, but we're late. We had bad pollinizing weather combined with a heavy frost earlier than that. And that, that just put everything off. You doing okay, guys? Yeah, it's yeah. great. Uh, it's an easy job. Easy job? Yeah. Wait till the end of the day. I remember my younger time when I'm playing there. Well, that's good. We like to get our youth back in the pepper patch. <laughs> okay, I'll see you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm planting pepper because uh, the cherries are late this year and uh, we need money, so we have to take what it, what it passes. Even though it's not paying well. <laughs> One dollar and 25 cents for this. And there's a 60 plant of pepper in each. Maybe uh, we will be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> We're buying a big uh, Winnebago this year. Maybe a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> the cheap one. <laughs> I think the nearest Sylvain will get to a Winnebago this summer is Greg's old trailer. But by the beginning of June, most of the crew have arrived and are camping in the orchard. There's still no picking and there's not a lot happening to get you out of bed in the mornings. No water! Why the heck not? The one? It's hard keeping a camp running smoothly. But Greg tries to give his pickers basic home comfort. Heck, I want a shower after work. Everybody wants a shower after work, you know, and they, they want to have it be able to cook a good meal and, and you know, know that their food's not going to rot because there's no refrigerator provided for them. But you know, all across the South Okanagan, there's hundreds of fruit pickers looking for somewhere, anywhere to pitch their tents. And for the locals, well, it's a problem. When someone's taking a bath and you're drinking water, it's hard to put out the welcome mat. The local Rotary Club, including Greg, have set up an organized camp at Loose Bay, 
which people hope will solve the problem. For Greg, there's a reward to looking after his workers well. I kind of like to be part of their good experience, you know. I, I want them to feel like that they got treated well by us and, and the way I was treated well. Make a few bucks, have a little fun, you know, turn the page and carry on. Now we are in the Okanagan Valley, near Pentington in Naramata. And we have no tourists here except Quebecers. <laughs> we are now in the cattle orchard where we are working for the summer. It's our new house, I mean our cookhouse, where we cook our thing and yeah, I don't know, the dishes. But we're all sleeping in a tent. Jean Vincent and his friends are a good hour's drive north of Oliver and they seem pretty happy with their camp. The orchard owner provides a rustic sort of cookhouse and from time to time, a welcome bit of mother food. <laughs> I was uh, telling Sylvan this morning, I said, yeah, we are, we are a really great gang. Go! Go! I make some new friends, uh, especially um, Valerie. I have a friend, and she told me, uh, Valerie, uh, come in the Canagan, it's very funny. You know, uh, you make money. It's hot and many lakes, and you can swim. You do what you want. You, you can work, you can have fun. Diane will never forget her first day in Oliver, knowing no one and feeling a bit sorry for herself. Uh, Who does she bump into but an old school friend? I crossed the, the main street and I saw her at the 7-Eleven. She talked to the phone. And I wait that she finish her phone to talk to her and what she do here. Karine, c'est une de, une de mes amies que j'ai rencontrée à, à Victo. Elle, on étudie à la même école. Puis on s'est rencontrés là, puis on a connu les mêmes amis. Puis on on s'est connus comme ça. With still no sign of the cherries being ready, you've got to make the most of your talents to earn an odd buck. Sylvain turns his hand to being a carpenter's assistant, working on Greg's new sorting shed. It's not a normal season. We've had very unusual weather leading up. You know, we're a little off balance. Nobody really knows how much we've got. We don't know exactly what we've got yet. We usually have a much better feel for this crop, for the crop. This year, things are, they're off. And that means a lot of kids hanging out in downtown Oliver with no money and a lot of time on their hands. The center of the community is only two blocks long and we have normally in the summer months up to a maximum of 500 young people that probably move through the area. So even having 25 or 30 of them in a bunch when your town's only two blocks long gives the appearance of quite a large crowd. Initially, we judge a book by its cover. It's just the way humans are. And these young people certainly um, don't look wonderful and are not exactly um, a rose, uh, so to speak. And I have a, a community that's 55% retired. They're not accepting of uh, the way some of the young people look. Everyone used to go down Triangle Park, right beside the subway in town. It's quite respectable to have like 250 people sitting there waiting for farmers to come and pick them up. Basically, when they get here, a lot of them are broke. They're flat broke. That's why they're here, you know. There's no jobs in Quebec for the young people. There, there aren't. I live there, I know. What we forget quite often when we look at the situation of transient workers in the Okanagan is that it's a fabric made up of different groups. We have true transient workers who come here to work on farms, they set up their camp in, on the farm or they live in the cabin on the farm, they work there, we don't see them, they are busy working. There's also a second group of low budget travelers, they are the ones hanging out in town, 
they are seen as being those young transient workers when they are actually not. And they are the ones that trigger a lot of the tensions in the small communities like Oliver and Asuyas. Most of the people, they are really, really nice when they know that you're Quebecers. Except at the supermarket, if you're a Quebecers, they check you. Oh, is he gonna stole something? It's really, uh, it's really sad to know that we are, we have a bad reputation because uh, not all the Quebecers are like that. Maybe it's because uh, all the the Quebecers that came here are so marginal and uh, they all uh, all that kind of color in the in their hair and all stud and. So maybe it can afraid some people. I have always found them very, very friendly, polite. They'll open a door for you if they're going in, and they're, uh, if you smile at them and say hello to them, they're very friendly. I find them just like our ordinary kids. I can't see them any difference. Cherries require a lot of help. Local people traditionally Children and adults have not been very interested in picking cherries. My own kids included, they would rather work in the packing houses. The positive aspect to having them come and pick the fruit is my, I don't have to do it myself because it's not very nice work and that's, it's generally the last job anybody would resort to around here. Orchard work is very strange. It doesn't appeal to everybody. I love it, you know, I really enjoy it, but there's, there's many people that don't like it. Coming down. A lot of people will say to us, oh God, this is boring. It's very repetitious. Thinning is kind of boring. And the cherry picking hasn't even started yet. Jean Vincent, like everybody else, is just filling in time, thinning apples, until Mother Nature does her stuff. As I tell the pickers, we're going to start when the cherries are ready. The cherries are driving from now on. The cherries are, are the clock. This year it's a late crop, you know, and you get panicky. You want to go out there and get them in a box. Because, you know, once they're in a box, you can sell them, make money. And God knows we need to make money. But the thing is, is that you have to be patient in this game. This is a natural thing that's happening to us out here. And a natural thing is going to run its course. And we're going to be there at the right time. Each week, it's another three weeks for waiting, so it's beginning long. So we do uh, some little job, uh, like planting tomato and uh, peppers. But with not enough to do, everybody is getting on everyone else's nerves. It's more hard to stay with the other people than uh, together, because <laughs> yeah. we are uh, 17 people here. Only three fridge and uh, two stove. Sometimes we pissed off ourselves. He pissed me off or I piss <laughs> him off, but... <laughs> we take a walk, but both sides. <laughs> and after the walk, we go back. Oh, hello. I know you. I think so. <laughs> yeah, and we're just happy to see the other. Yeah. We didn't really fight uh, seriously. No. It's always for a, a little thing. Not really important. This is the nerve time. This is the time when the, the sky becomes your constant companion, when you look at the sky with every waking moment and you wake up at four o'clock in the morning and you smell the smell of rain or you smell or you get out on the deck. And... This morning, um, everybody go pick for another, another people around here, another farm, because uh, the, the great cherry is not, not ready yet. Greg might be a bit envious seeing the neighbor's crop ready for picking, but different soils and different varieties all affect when the cherries are ripe and ready for market. Poor Marise, she won't be picking. She scalded her foot. My feet is burned at the second degrees. Yeah, because of the hot water I drop on my foot. When I was at the first time at the hospital, I wanted to call my mother, but I thought, oh no, she would be too uh, inquiet. And uh, 
so I decide to not call her. But uh, yeah, some of time I thought, oh, I would be great with my mom at home. He's my dog. <laughs> so, um, me and Sylvain, we heard that uh, there was a guy in town that uh, is, uh, his dog had a baby. We saw that little baby, Newton. Greg said no dogs, but he don't say no puppy. At the beginning of this week, we found it a little tough because uh, with my feet, I can't work and uh, we are really short with the money. We're just buying what it is important to buy. We don't care about the other stuff. We still have something to do. I have picked 20 buckets for today. It's, yeah, but it's not really good. Yeah, I suppose the good picker can pick 50 buckets, but I don't know how they do that. Yeah, <laughs> how they do that? That's the question. That's, That's the question. <laughs> I want to see that. <laughs> Big day of work. <laughs> Woo Everybody gets to work tomorrow, but it won't be picking cherries. We're going to start Tuesday. That's sad news, but that we have work. That's the good news. This crop is not talking to me. This crop is being a bastard out there, okay? We got lots of little jobs for anybody that wants to work. Sunshine Festival and it has a parade. They block Main Street and a lot of floats pass with people of uh, each culture. But there's no floats with the Fleur de Lis from Quebec. But it doesn't matter because just a few days later they have their own Saint Jean Baptiste Day celebrations. And here, it's just a great excuse for another party. La Saint-Jean, c'est une occasion de s'amuser. Si on sait que, tu sais, quand on est au Québec, « Hey, tu vas au BC cet été? » Oui, bon, ben, on y va tout, puis on se rejoint au Shit Lake. Tu sais, c'est comme la place où on se rejoint. C'est important de célébrer le chez nous, parce que ça nous rappelle chez nous, justement. Tu sais, c'est notre nationalité, c'est notre naissance, c'est notre nature. C'est comme ça le grand but de la fête. Tu rencontres des gens en cours de route, puis tu sais, es sûr que tu vas les revoir à Saint-Jean. Tu sais, c'est le rendez-vous que tout le monde vient se rejoindre, tu sais, que tu as rencontré en voyage, puis là, tu sais que tu vas les revoir à cet endroit-là. C'est un gros party. Je pense que nous devons avoir Saint-Jean-Baptiste Day ensemble. Que Oliver devrait avoir une célébration, et, you know, we might have a lot of fun. The reason that my family and Greg Norton's family like having them around is that we know them. But for the average Oliver person, this is just a scruffy looking, strangely dressed kid on the street corner. It's a mystery, it's a threat. And anything that humanizes this situation for everybody, it seems like, would benefit everybody. When I was in Quebec, I was for the separation of the country, of our country. But this time I, I don't know. I have changed my way because when you, came, when you come here, you can say I, I want to be separated because 
English people are so friendly, are so funny. <laughs> I, I'm, a I'm in a political way, but uh, this question is so... Uh, I cannot, I cannot, sir, I don't know. Almost six weeks behind schedule, the cherries are ripe. But now, the weather's bad. And for Greg, it's getting pretty tense. Las Vegas, I laugh at people that have to go and gamble. <laughs> we, we shoot the craps every day of the year. It rains for a couple hours under the right conditions and they start popping on you, they start cracking. They're gone, they're history. Then it turns into $10,000 in an hour. There's only two things he can do. He can wait till it stops raining and try to blow the wet off the cherries with a wind machine, or he can spray them with calcium to stop them from splitting. Well, there's just a limit to what these little gaffers can take. I mean, it doesn't matter what you do. It's just they fill up with water and they burst. And it uh, makes us feel good to spray calcium, but it doesn't make the cherry feel good. But there's definitely... Already there's two calcium sprays on this since uh, since five o'clock, so. And a special protectant spray yesterday, so maybe, I don't know. It's not as bad as you think, and not yet, but it, it's a little early for them to crack too, because the absorption has to take, takes a few hours. I saw cracking at one of the other farms already though, so that shows you. It's been raining, it rained for eight hours. It started at two o'clock this morning, so now 10 so that's an awful long time for a cherry to not split forecast is five days of rain in which case in which case there won't be a lot of fun happening around this place good morning Shirley so how are the cherries well so far so good Shirley I hope so <laughs> yeah me too Shirley I really want you guys to make money this year. We want you to make money too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Because if you're making money, I'm making money. <laughs> That's why when we want to eat cherry, we go sit. Go to, to the, the neighbors. You, we go Good. to the neighbor. <laughs> Good girl. We can work and we can do anything. <laughs> Just stay under the tap. I, I've been in the Mugdjoka again uh, one month and a half. Yeah, I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm, uh, I eat, I, I speak with the other, I'm going to the, to the town. And, uh, I try to pass time. <laughs> Greg tell us that if it was four days of rain, the, the season is finished. We were counting on the cherries, so if it's finished, we're finished. Last, a break from the endless rain. It's sunny and warm. The cherries are red and ripe for picking. After seven weeks of waiting, there's no time to waste. It's pick em or lose em. Rodrigo, come on, it's six o'clock. That is. Come on, let's go. I'm good. I don't care if you're good. Let's go. Come on, we got picking to do for Christ's sake. Here, a lot of beautiful cherry. No bad cherry, just beautiful cherry. They're really big, but not too many, though. The bees wasn't working too good this year. That's okay, that's good. We like that job anyway. 
It's so peaceful. <laughs> I think it is a meditation. For me, it's easy to, to get in this state when I pick fruits. To be in your body, it's physical and it's concentration and agility. It's just nice to be in a tree, you know, you're working, you're in a tree with cherries all around you and the friends around. It's nice atmosphere. And then the sides. Wherever there's a high-end market where we send our cherries, our goal is to try and have them in the box and in the cooler within two hours of them coming off the tree. Within 56 hours, we can be on the streets of uh, Bangkok, Thailand. Our, our helpers, our workers, when we tell them that, I mean, they, you know, it's exciting. You know, and they're part of that. You know, well, sometimes I'll point to an airplane flying by and say, our cherries could be on there going to Montreal, you know. And it's kind of fun. This is a cabochon. Yeah, I'm really ordinary picker. I need two more hands. But you can sing. I sing in the tree. When I find you beautiful cherry. Janin. Janin. I just want Janin with you. Okay, have a jam session. I rock uh, here in the Akaragan Valley with the mountain around me. It's better than in Montreal. I work with the nature and some people have affinity with me. Oh, the first day, uh, especially uh, in the morning, uh, I found it uh, really, really tough. Even uh, at the dinner time, I said, I hate that. But the, in the afternoon, it was better. I don't eat it like I was ate it this morning. I love the work. There's nothing I don't like. It's sure the day is long. It's quite 10 hours of work. But I don't like it. You know, you take a beat and you're sure that you're great and you're so proud of you and somebody just shout faster finger it's not uh, it's not really funny and we have to to be fast all the time and don't know about the cherry just tuk, 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 tuk. but for the first day it's, it's good it's been a great day in the Okanagan Valley. They've got a few more dollars than they had yesterday, and uh, they had a good experience, and now they're going swimming. Ah, yeah. <laughs> when I was in Quebec, I was surrounded by many people, you know, and uh, they were my friends. But when I came here, oh my God, I was alone. And I was very afraid. I have to decide by myself. I have to do something by myself. And now I can do that. Because this is the thing I have learned more. Now I can say, I can be alone. I can decide by myself. I can go there. I can make this. And my parents are not back of me. Back in Naramata, for Jean Vincent and his buddies, the Okanagan experience is turning a little sour. I think they feel that they might not be able to pick enough cherries. And what I said to them was, give it a try. You might like it. You may be very good at it. You don't know until you try it. They didn't show up at six. And I know that they knew because my brother had also asked one of the workers here to let them know that they should be up here at six o'clock. When we wake up, woke up at five o'clock this morning, we were too tired, so we decided to 
stay a bit in bed and then going after it. Because uh, yeah, at 5 o'clock it would have been impossible for us, we were too tired already. I, mean, I think it's better for us to come back. But to go back. Yeah, go back. Come yeah. Back. I don't think there's any point in you picking today because if you're not going to be able to stay the full season, mm -hmm. that means we have to spend time yeah. to train you and everything. Mm -hmm. So maybe we better just leave it as it is and yeah, yeah not have you st even start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. Good then. Yeah. We are leaving to our parents' house. <laughs> so you don't need to pay for yeah, the house and the food and everything. And then when you are going in the world <laughs> and you have to pay your food and your yeah your place to sleep and everything, it mean it costs a lot more money. So yeah, we learned that probably also how to deal with money now. In fact, the bad season means a lot of kids are strapped for cash. And at Loose Bay, some of them aren't paying their camping fees. The Loose Bay camp evolved because a lot of growers don't have a camp like ours. There's probably a hundred kids in the area right now and with really no work and no place to stay. So Loose Bay is a community camp that, that I helped establish through the Oliver Rotary Club that is to provide safe, clean, cheap place for people to stay while they wait for the, for the work to come along. When you don't pay, you're stealing. It's called theft. And I don't think any of you people look like thieves to me. You look like good young people. You're welcome in our community. But it's going to cost you one dollar per night, and that's all. That's all we're asking. And I personally don't think that's a lot of money. And if you can't pay the dollar a night, then I invite you to leave. The, the walkabout went very well. They're all lovely kids. They are. I like them a lot. And I asked them to pay one dollar per night for the privilege of staying here. And I mean, we get firewood for them every day. We have toilets shower facility, fire pits, garbage removal, over $300 a month for garbage removal alone. It doesn't happen from love, it happens from $1 per night. But Greg will soon have problems of his own. It's my second day and it's, um, it's more cool this than yesterday. So it's more easy, but the wind, it's dangerous. What we're getting out of here is, is ridiculous. Uh, we're just, there's no cherries there. You know, there's just no fruit and the pickers are, you know, they're making the best out of a real bad thing, eh? <laughs> they quit training and we'll come in and just dry them. No more calcium. But very hard to grow cherries in a swimming pool. <laughs> very hard. Today we start at 5 at work, but we need to stop at 7 because the rain throughout the rain start, start to uh, drop and uh, we can't pick when it's raining. So uh, we do just two hours today and we don't pick more today. It's finished. I'll see you later. I'm going to go over and blow some laughing. Well, bye bye. I'm not worried about making money. I have money for a couple of days and, I, and I'm okay now. I don't need a thing for a future.
yesterday we realized that we were we were probably going to have to be finished. Um, the crop is so light, it's, it's probably even half of what I thought it was, and I thought it was horrible to start with. And it's, it's even less than that. And uh, we just simply ran out of fruit. I have worked uh, three days and I have to do 250. So it's, it's good. Three days of work. I do my 10 bucks by hour. It's good. I work uh, for four days and three hours and a half. And I made about 300 bucks. I mean, it's not a happy event. What the heck? They were supposed to make a thousand bucks each, and they're going to walk out of here with three hundred or four hundred. Not enough. I mean, not enough for them. The last days, I was liking this job, so I think uh, I learned about being more patient. We're starting to eat, to know each other, and poof, it's finished. It's already finished, and now that we know the other, bye bye, <laughs> we move. So, comment je voyais les Anglais? Pas pas tout comme je les vois là, pas du tout comme je les vois maintenant. Je pensais plus que c'était des gens. Euh, <laughs> Comme on dit au Québec, des têtes carrées. <laughs> Mais square, square head. <laughs> This is what we said in Quebec. <laughs> But uh, je pensais que c'était plus des gens euh, qui faisaient leurs petites affaires, qui dérangeaient pas les autres. Mais tu sais, qui... Je pensais pas que c'était des gens amicales comme ça qui disaient bonjour à tout le monde, surtout aux Québécois. I'm surprised. <laughs> Come on to the back, guys. Let's have a beer. I always have this speech at after every year, but this year was a really was a special year because it was the the worst. The worst <laughs> was the worst year we've ever had. To the worst year ever. <laughs> <laughs> You people were a very special crew. We'll never forget you guys. And we're going to think of nothing but good because of you guys. As usual, we have some awards. There's always pickers out there that are very good pickers, conscientious. They clean their tree. They pick clean, and they're good. It was a tie. And one of them's our birthday boy, and the other one's the guy with the hair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very okay. much. Yeah. You take the bucket and I take the bottle. No, I I I, I take the bottle <laughs> and take the top. <laughs> oh my God! Hey, hey Chris. Chris. I'm I got the AC. <laughs> oh wow, you guys! Uh, you're crazy, you buddy. You didn't have to do that.
Goodbye 